8.30, and we're going to be respectful of everyone's time, and we will get started. So we are going to begin uh, with the BCALA president, Richard E. Ashby, Jr., and we will let him go from here. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Michelle. I thank everybody for taking time out this evening um, in, this, in these hard times and join us on this web, webinar, this, this um, town hall conference call meeting. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge those families that are going through um, this COVID-19 um, pandemic that we're going through. We know um, some of us are losing family members like Michelle, um, we lost family members. Some of our co-workers are out of work and not being paid. It's a hardship on everyone all around. And we want everyone to know that the Black Caucus is um, well aware of what's going on. <clears throat> We're behind the scenes, working on things, talking to different, different library um, administrators and, and systems. But at this time, I'd just like to take uh, 10 seconds of silence and, mem and remembrance of those that have passed and remembrance of those that are sick and that are suffering during this time. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to um, acknowledge all past presidents. I see um, Andrew is on. Um, I don't know what other past presidents are on. I suppose Denevetta would be here. Stanton would be here. Um, Josh, Gladys, um, Jerome, Ms. Hamill, all the past presidents of the Black Caucus. We stand on your shoulders this evening. We stand on your shoulders during this our 50th anniversary year. And we just like to say thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. I'd like to acknowledge all of our new members of the caucus. We thank you and we appreciate you. And we just want you to know that the doors of the caucus are wide open, committees are wide open. We have all, we have committees that are, need your help. We have committees that need, that are going to need chairmen in the next administration, chairmen and co-chairmen. And uh, we just welcome all the new members. I want to welcome the leadership, the executive board, the co-chairs, the chairs of all of the committees. Uh, I, I thank you so very much for all your hard work that you've been putting into this caucus. Um, at this time, we want to talk about some of the things that uh, we've done so far with, with the caucus that you should be aware of. Uh, we've had some um, amendments to our bylaws. We now have an assistant treasurer and an assistant secretary. That is so that work can be alleviated, so much hard work can be alleviated from these these people that are running these um, positions and that there will be a smooth transition from one administration to, to the next. Uh, I'd like to give kudos to Michelle Hayes for the, uh, the newsletter that she put out, wonderful mm -hmm. newsletter. Thank you so very much for the newsletter. Uh, the NCAL committee, oh, you ladies and gentlemen worked very hard on the NCAL committee to put to, together one of the best conferences that we were gonna ever have. Through the circumstances, we had to cancel the concert. Not cancel, I'm sorry. We had to postpone mm -hmm. the concert for 2021. And um, Shante, Vice President Shante Simpson, she'll talk about that later on. We have so many um, different collaborations with the caucus now. We're really spreading out and making ourselves making ourselves known and um, putting a footprint in things. We, we have a great relationship with ALA. We're really involved with ALA. We're very involved with, with JCLC and Shante Burns. She'll talk about that later. Also, we have collaborations with the African American Studies Librarians um, Institute. We have a collaboration with the Afri African Libraries and Information Association and institutions. Um, these are the two, two organizations that we're collaborating with. We're moving forward with the Black Caucus. I'd like to remind everyone that the uh, Nominations for officers are open. If Jennifer is here, she'll speak about that more. If not, we'll loop back around. But I encourage everyone to nominate yourself, nominate someone. Uh, there's so much need to be done in this caucus, and we need so many people to join and help us out. Uh, thank you so very much for coming once again, and uh, I'm looking forward to a wonderful session. We're looking forward for questions and input, suggestions. This is your time to let us know 
how we're doing and what you expect from your caucus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard. Um, I did not introduce myself in the beginning. I apologize. Uh, so my name is Michelle M. Hayes. I'm a BCALA board member. I'm president of the Indiana Black Librarians Network, and I'm also co-chair of programming uh, for NCAL 11, along with Tawana Hodge, who's also on our call right now. Before we go any further, we would like everyone to introduce themselves in the chat box so you can give us your name and where you're from, and then that'll give us a good idea of who is on the call. And um, I'm, I'm in Philadelphia. That's where I'm at now. And also, if you want to give us your position. So hello, Faith from uh, Toledo. And so while everyone is doing that, we will let our president-elect, Shante Burns Simpson, uh, give us an overview of the caucus and take it away, Shante. Thank you. So hello, beautiful people. As Richard pointed out, these are uncertain times we are in. The things that we knew or did before can't be assumed at this time. I'm here in New York City, which has been heavily affected by COVID-19. We have been asked to stay in, and if we have to go out, we have to practice social distance, distancing like everybody else. And as I work from home and have conference calls with my team and colleagues, I hear them share feelings of depression and anxiety, but also share amazing stories of love and appreciation. For example, neighbors are going to grocery shopping for each other. Uh, they're leaving toiletries at the door for one another. And that just makes me think of a quote that Martin Luther King Jr. once said, which said, we must combine the toughness of the serpent and the softness of the dove, a tough mind and a tender heart. Mm -hmm. It's times like these that show folks what we are made of. And I find libraries are doing that. We are taking our services virtually. We are sharing our resources and packing them and packaging them to the world where they can access them online. And we did it in the matter of days along with the libraries having to think fast and make abrupt changes, our professional organizations are doing the same. ALA canceling annual for the first time in 75 years. And the Black Caucus, we are postponing our national conference where we're celebrating our 50th anniversary to next year. Uh, we are planning for the dates to be July 29th through August 2nd, 2021 and it will still be in the wonderful city of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yay. I, like so many of you, am proud to be a member of this prestigious organization. We have spearheaded collaborations between the ethnic organizations, from the joint statements around the shootings in El Paso and Dayton, as well as the desecration of Emmett Till's memorial and Trump's horrible comments about Baltimore. BCLA collected and disseminated donations to the public libraries in Baltimore, El Paso, Dayton, and to Emmett Till's Memorial in Glendora. The donations were voluntary from each ethnic affiliate, and the amount was whatever the association could afford. Like Frederick Douglass said, it's not light we need, but fire. Not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. It's in these times we show our worth. We are thinking of ways to support our communities during this time. We wanted to have this town hall to bring our membership together, to give us updates, and to hear your voice. As long as I have the mic right now, I will give a shout out to uh, the Joint Conference of Librarians of Color, uh, which will be held October 5th through the 9th, 2022 in St. Saint Saint Pete Beach, Florida. I'm proud to announce that Richard and James are on that conference committee. And Richard is the co-chair because BCLA is one of the, the, the main um, sponsorships of this uh, upcoming JCLC conference. So I thank you. I look forward to this wonderful town hall. Thank you, Chante. We appreciate 
that very much. So do we have any chairperson on the call from the International Committee? If you do, if you could type something in the chat box and then we can unmute your call. So I will go ahead and do an overview on the newsletter and then we'll wait and see if there are any other um, co-chairs that would like to report. So we did have our first uh, newsletter in about a year. We had to do a bit of a reset. We did a redesign and then we had some challenges uh, with the previous uh, designers of the newsletter. And so we have a new designer. Uh, we were able to push that out. Uh, we're excited about that first edition. But the newsletter is only as good as the articles that I receive from you. So this will be a great opportunity to say what your library or what you're doing individually during this time of challenge and transition. Uh, what kind of digital programming are you putting out? How are you using Zoom or Facebook Live or anything like that? So feel free to get those articles to me. And we're going to try to publish in May. And so the submission deadline is going to be April the 10th. It's also great for us to have high resolution pictures to include with that. Uh, we will have an article about today's town hall. Um, so anything that's of interest to you. Uh, also, if you're reading books and you want to do a book review, we'll accept those. Um, M. Claire, uh, I know that you just retired. So if you wanted to send us an article about um, kind of a capstone of your career and what you're hoping to do in retirement, we'd be happy to accept something like that. So we just want to hear from everyone. We definitely want to hear from the affiliates. And this is a way for us to kind of stay connected as a caucus to kind of learn and grow from each other. So are Keith Jemison or Tracy Hunter on the call? I don't think they are. Keith is on. Keith is on? Okay, great. Keith, would you like to give us about a three minute update on NCAL? We know that it's been postponed to 2021, but would you like to talk about that a little bit? And then Chandra will unmute you. Sure. Sure, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, okay, thank good. Uh, thank you very much. I was uh, very, very pleased to hear those quotes that Shante uh, shared with us and all the welcoming. We're very excited that the conference will still be in Tulsa, the home of the uh, Black Wall Street, Tulsa City County Library CEO and their very large local arrangements committee, which is probably about 25 people <laughs> is also very excited. So just to let you know, we're gonna move forward with our planning that we had for this year and invite everyone to do it for 2021. And uh, we hope that you all will be there for what will be an exciting time. I will tell you in 2021, we will be celebrating, the, commemorating the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. They'll be doing that for the entire year of 2021. They're actually going to start a little bit before that time. So it'll be an exciting time in Tulsa and we look forward to uh, you all coming. Thanks for letting me say something too. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, Go ahead, Richard. We're, we're, we're going to continue our celebration of the 50th anniversary throughout the year. We, we're looking into some virtual celebrating and we're um, Shante and as part of the programming committee, as soon as this pandemic is over and we're able to go out again, Shante will be reaching out to Andrew Jackson and Latrice Booker, head of the uh, chairman of co-chair of the 50th anniversary. And we'll be looking for our affiliates to do some programming with, around our 50th anniversary. And we history. will support with money. <laughs> we will support with <laughs> <find> money. <laughs> so, right. So if you write, uh, Chantel will be sending out information um, Thursday about writing proposals for programming in your, in your affiliate state uh, around the 50th anniversary. In addition to that, 
as we all know that usually the gavel is exchanged from one administration to the next during the annual in June. This year, the annual is canceled and Shantae has to get that gavel on time, right Shantae? And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go to New York and have a ceremony. She's in New York and we'll have a ceremony of me passing her the gavel uh, so she, her administration can take, take its rightful turn and get in office at the right time. Thank you, Richard. We appreciate that. So um, if everyone can make sure that they're accessing their chat box in order to see everyone's introduction, uh, we also have someone, EJ Brumfield, who's at Prairie View, and they're making surgical masks for hospitals. So that is incredible. So if you wanted to get additional information on that, feel free to click on their link. So that's great. I know John said that he was having a problem hearing. And if you're calling from your phone, uh, there might be something special that you need to do about that. Uh, I want to uh, thank Chandra Walker, who has been helping us enormously in so many things, but definitely to set up uh, this Zoom tonight. So thank you for all that you're doing for us, Chandra. We really appreciate it. Uh, we also put the email address for submitting items for the newsletter in the chat. So feel free uh, to access that. And someone also mentioned uh, thanking BCLA Professional Development Committee for the recent webinar opportunity, 316 and 323. I know Tawana Hodge and several other people were instrumental in that. So we have a lot of a talent in our caucus, and I'm glad that we're able uh, to spread that around and share that with everyone. So do we have any... Um, Chair people or BCLA board members that have joined the call since we started? I think Andrew Jackson is on. Um, I would like to hear a report from, about the affiliates and what new affiliates do we have if Andrew's here. Andrew, go ahead and take it away. Okay, hi everybody. Um, hi. I am a co-chair of the affiliates committee with Sandra Michelle Eccles, who's also here in New York. Um, at this point, we, have, we are in the process of um, updating and, and renewing the, the uh, active membership of our affiliates. Uh, we've got Metropolitan Atlanta, the Georgia Library Association, Connecticut Black Caucus, New York Black Caucus, New Jersey Black Caucus, Indiana, Colorado, Pennsylvania, a new uh, fledging affiliate, St. Louis, um, Maryland, and Tulsa is, is in the process of joining. Uh, Chicago and Massachusetts are in a hiatus right now. And um, we are also encouraging any library science students, if there are, is an active uh, affiliate in your state to belong to that state, uh, uh, the affiliate in that state, instead of trying to start a, a student affiliate, which we've had several inquiries about because of the quick turnover of every two, three years of students, be better if you join the actual uh, as an astute, as a student organization of your state uh, affiliate, and you can be in touch with me, and I can connect you to that. Um, based on what we're doing now and what's happening with uh, the changes for ALA and with the uh, NCAL being postponed and with the 50th anniversary proposal, uh, I'm looking for information uh, from Jante this week, and we'll be looking to set up a an affiliates town hall on Zoom so we can get all the affiliates and talk about the ideas that we can come up with for the affiliates to celebrate the 50th anniversary. Uh, I think that would be a way of energizing the affiliates as well as encouraging membership uh, and uh, getting the affiliates connected to each other online since it doesn't look like many of us are going to see each other at ALA and not even uh, BCLA this year. Uh, so that's my brief report. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. <clears throat> yes, the next person that we're going to have up is going to be James Allen Davis Jr. And he's going to give us an update on professional development. And Chandra, if you can uh, uh, him, thanks. Hello, everyone. Um, so this is uh, my update for uh, professional development. I'm uh, co-chair uh, with Anna on professional development. 
we did our the accomplishments that we've had. We had our first uh, professional development digest that went out, um, which we're pretty excited about. We had our first webinar, a very successful webinar uh, by Kyra Han, uh, and that was um, that that worked really well. It, it uh, I think we had over sixty, maybe fifty attendees. Uh, for our second uh, go at it, we did two se uh, sections of that. Uh, our grant proposals are doing well, um, and we have a meeting coming up tomorrow. So uh, we, you know, we we're hoping to see more webinars come out. Uh, we have a few proposals that we're working on, uh, but that's to come, and I, I'll share that with you as that uh, comes more to the surface. So thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you, James. We appreciate that. So we do have a text report from Vivian uh, concerning the library in Nigeria. And she did submit that to all the panelists. Um, at this time, they will not be able to present that program, uh, but hopefully in the future, uh, the committee will be able to share information uh, what we'd also like to do is if you're a committee chair, we need all the committee chairs contact information and kind of a two or three uh, line bullet about what your committee does so that we can get people active and get people to helping you. So when people join the caucus, sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge to learn how they can kind of jump in and become involved. And so moving forward in Shantae's administration, uh, this is something we want to help her do uh, because part of what her mission is, is to put BCLA members into leadership throughout uh, the library world. And this is one way we're going to do that. Um, is Dina better on? Is Dina better in? I don't see her, but if she is, raise your hand. I don't think she is. is so, go ahead. I'm sorry. So let's go back to, to elections because this is very important. Uh, nominations are open now for elections. We have, we need a nomination for treasurer, assistant treasurer, secretary, assistant, assistant secretary, uh, and, um, executive board members, and, and vice president, president elect. You can, you can nominate yourself. You can have someone nominate you. When, when, I, when I took office, the model we chose was step up and get involved. Never since we took office is this more important that everyone steps up and get involved right now. We're at a crucial point for this caucus. We're at, the, we're at the 50th year. We're getting ready to go into our next 50 years. Uh, we worked hard to set up for Shantae to be able to lead this caucus into the next 50 years. But to be a leader, you need some followers and you need, you need a team. And um, right now, we need some people to step up and get involved and uh, nominate yourself for some, for some of these positions and volunteer to be on some, some committees. Thank you. So I know that we have a member from the Indiana Black Librarians Network who is going to throw their hat in the ring for assistant secretary. So we're excited about that. Uh, so we're definitely um, moving that along. Yes, um, I know, I know this, this, the treasurer, the current treasurer uh, who, stepped in, who stepped in when our, our, our the previous treasurer had to resign Brandy McNeil, I know she's going to throw her hat in the ring for the treasurer, and I know Brenda Perkins, who also stepped up when the secretary resigned, I know she's going to throw her hat into the ring, and that's why we have assistant positions, so they can learn from each other, and when the transition takes over, it'll be smooth. That sounds great, Richard. Thank you. Is Deborah Johnson on the call? Or Grace? Deborah or Grace? Also, Karen Lemons, if she's available. Oh, Grace is here. Okay. If we can unmute Grace and let Grace uh, tell, her, tell us a two-minute report that she's going to give us for her committee. 
Okay, uh, I'm Grace Jackson Brown with from uh, Missouri State University, and I'm going to uh, give you give you all an update on the two grants that uh, passed the first round of the IMLS grant proposal. Um, they are um, a grant that Deborah Robinson and myself um, are co-directors of. The, the title of it now is a Taxonomy of Black History Month Programming in Public Libraries. And this will be a study that will look at um, through the uh, present scope of uh, Black History Month programming in um, all types of public libraries currently. We'll look at um, the scope, the, the, aud the targeted audience, the types of programmings that they're offering, and look at the effectiveness of those programs. So we're, um, we're teaming up as part of BCLA um, with ASALA, the Association for the Study of African-American History and Life, and also with um, a research organization from the University of Michigan that Deborah Robinson is the assistant director of. And that group is called um, We Global, the African-American Living Abroad Project. They're out of the University of Michigan uh, Research Institute. And so we will be, um, if we pass the first round um, into the, the acceptance phase, this proposal will go from uh, September 2020 through August 2021. The second proposal is being directed by Anna Induma, I believe is how her last name is pronounced. She's assistant professor at the University of Maryland. The title of her program is Breaking Barriers National Forum on the Future of Black Librarianship. And um, she is in that proposal proposing um, to design a toolkit of resources for librarians and educators to recruit Black or African American librarians. Um, and then from there, uh, also launch an online MLIS uh, program, an independent group of um, BCLA called iBlack Caucus, which would be a student group. So they're proposing that they have a one-day pre-conference at uh, NC, um, our conference, which is now in 2021 in Cal, um, a pre-conference at that point, um, students would be selected, um, library science students would be selected, uh, they would have a stipend to attend, um, and they would also develop focus groups on how to how to move forward on, with that I Black Caucus uh, student group. So that's kind of a, a quick synopsis of the two IMLS grants that are going forward. They they had the uh, deadline extended for the final proposal to be sent. It was March 31st, which is today. Well, it's now moved to um, April 17th. So we're busy putting together the final proposals that will be looked up, looked at, and then um, I believe they will be, the finalists will be um, awarded in July. Thank you, Grace. We appreciate that report. Uh, and Andrew um, forgot to mention the California affiliate, and they actually have a North and South um, branches of that just to cover the entire state. Uh, so that's another affiliate we have within our caucus. So we appreciate Andrew uh, and all the work he's doing um, to keep the affiliates vibrant. And I think it would be great for us in the future to be able to connect on the affiliate level to kind of see what programming have been successful so we can share uh, best practices. So the next person that is going to be speaking is going to be Karen Lemons. Karen, are you ready? 
Um, yes, I'm ready. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm the uh, chairperson of the reading is grand um, proposal and usually around this time you would be getting an email um, requesting proposals, but because of the coronavirus um, and because public libraries are closed as well as school libraries are closed. Um, I'm, I'm uh, I have no choice but to postpone this and I would like to postpone this to June 30th and perhaps hold the programming in September in October instead of September, but I will, it is a very much wait and see, hoping for a decline in the number of cases, hoping we can zero out, you know? Um, so that's what I would like to do, but I will also be consulting with the executive board to make sure that we, is that something we can do? Definitely, Karen. We think we're um, discussing that now. Discussing that now. And um, I have one quick question before I conclude my report. Um, if in the newsletter, is it possible for me to um, include past reading as grand program um, winners or award recipients so that people can see the type of programs that we do award? Is that possible for me to include that in the newsletter? Definitely. OK. Thank you so much. That You're welcome. My report. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Do we have any other BCALA board members who would like to give a one minute uh, update? We are going to have an opportunity for everyone to give um, questions. Conrad. At the end. Okay. Hello, Conrad. Can you unmute Conrad, Chandra? There you go. Can you hear me now? We can. We can. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick overview because I'm kind of a half chair or the whole chair right now, the EDI committee. Um, we've been putting uh, fillers out for people, but I know everybody's been busy. So I just took it upon myself to go ahead and write up a quick overview for um, um, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, Taryn Pouchet has been a big help uh, giving me feedback, but one of the, it's just a simple sentence. The Black Caucus of the American Library Association advocates for Black librarians and continues that historical commitment through equity, diversity, and inclusion, regardless of race, class, age, employment, status, sex, gender identity, ethnicity, religion, spirituality, non-binary identified, and the LGBT plus community. So I just did that in one sentence, but that's just what we're dealing with right now. So I just want to give that report. Thank, Conrad, thank you, Comrade. We appreciate it. Thank you so come so much, Comrade, um, for taking on this mantle that I've, I've asked you to take on. Um, if you forward that to to us, the executive board, um, executive committee, we'll we'll vote it and then we'll vote on it and um, adopt it as as our as our official statement for the caucus regarding EDI. All right. So anyone that has questions, if they could go ahead and put their question in the chat box, and then we can answer the ones that we already know the answers to, and the ones that we have to do further research on, we will go ahead and research those. And just to let you know, we are recording this particular call, and we're going to send that link out. And um, Vice President Shante Burns Simpson, I thought it would be a great idea for us to kind of have a one page that would distill the information that we gathered from today. So we'll also include that in a separate link on the listserv. So I know that someone had a question about joining the EDI committee. And uh, the email address is crpeg at hotmail.com. And you can um, see that email address for yourself if you look in the chat box. Um, Michelle? Yes. I would be remiss if I was, would, did not give the backbone of this administration, a shout out and a thank you, a heartfelt thank you to a past president, Stanton Biddle. Um, Shante and I wear Mr. Biddle out with phone calls and text messages and emails. Uh, he has never failed to answer us. He has never failed to give us advice. Um, we just want to say thank you. I'll use his mic for a second. Let's stand and say a few words, please. Definitely.
Good evening, everyone. Hi, Dr. Biddle. Yeah, this is the first time I've tried to use this uh, mode of communication. How we're doing okay here in New York and keeping up to, with everyone and uh, doing the things we can to help the caucus. That's it. <laughs> well, he's also our conference uh, treasurer, so that means he's doing a lot of work behind the scenes. Yes. Um, no, so he works Faye, a lot, but silent. I'm, ass we appreciate I'm it. assisting the treasurer. Faye Mohammed uh, is the treasurer. Okay, okay Faye good. is the treasurer, and uh, Mr. Dr. Biddle is the uh, assistant, but we appreciate all the work you're doing. Faye, I think you're on the call. Would you like to say something? Dr. Bill is also assisting the second the treasurer for the caucus also. He's so modest. They said she didn't have any remarks, but we appreciate you taking <laughs> the time out of your uh, busy day. We know you have a lot of jobs, so thanks for coming. Something that I wanted to mention before um, we get into questions, if you have pictures um, from any time during um, history of BCALA, please submit those to me. Uh, the newsletter editor, and we did place that um, email address in the chat box. We'll probably pop that in again, uh, but I'd like to have a wide swath of pictures from the beginning all up until last year so we can have uh, a good representation of what we've done and what things have looked like, and if you could please label those, that would be great. Michelle? Yes. I'd like to um, talk about the technology for the caucus? Sure. Um, so as we know, the librarianship and libraries are changing, the landscape is changing, and the landscape of the caucus and how we conduct business, business is gonna to have to change. Uh, we ran into a problem this year where we had wanted to vote for the budget online, but it's not allowed, it's, that's not set up in the constitution that we vote online or remotely on the budget. Um, moving forward, we need, we're, gonna, we're going to have to have bylaws, amendments that allow us to vote up or remotely or without being at the conference. If the conference is canceled, then what do we do? Um, just like the, council, the conference is canceled now, how do we get, how do we change administration? So there's a lot of things that we're going to have to look at um, within the caucus on how we operate, how we vote, and just how we do things. And this is one of the reasons that we need people to, I keep saying it, to come on and nominate yourself and nominate somebody. A committee that's going to be very important to the sustainability of the organization is the technology committee. We're going to have to start Zooming and um, live streaming and um, all type of um, technology we're going to have to utilize to keep this caucus moving forward. We're, we're not going to be able to rely on the Facebook -face meeting as we did the first 50 years. Thank you, uh, Richter. We appreciate that. So the next person that is going to give us a brief report is Gladys. And if you could just tell us your committee. Okay, you're unmuted. Gladys, you can go ahead. Gladys, are you there? Okay, while we're waiting for Gladys to um, take care of those technical difficulties. Someone asked, uh, actually Nancy Wallace asked, how do you nominate yourself or someone else um, to one of those positions that Richard just mentioned? So an email went out to the list and the title was nomination. And so you just follow uh, that Google form. It's you on fill the it website. Out. It's also on the website. And it's on the website and you fill it out and go from there. We can uh, send that link out into the chat. Um, so you can follow that link, but it's a pretty simple process. It doesn't take very long. Did you nominate somebody? I will be doing that tonight. Okay. Gladys, are you there? And Tawana uh, provided that link. Thank you, Tawana. I think we're still not hearing Gladys. So Gladys is going to just text us 
her report. Uh, I think her audio is not working. Okay, so we're going to give her a minute to do that. While she's working on that, Casey, would you like to be a part of that technology committee? Um, while she's working on that, can you unmute Casey so she can give us an update on the school libraries? Hello, hello. Hi, Casey. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, we are still in uh, Washington, D.C. public school system experiencing um, pushback uh, regarding um, dismissal of librarians out of the budget for um, the fall of 2021 school year. Currently, what's going on right now, excuse me, um, all 2020 year. What's currently uh, taking place, what has currently place is that uh, principal able to petition librarian of the budget for the year. Uh, many of the schools that there are across the river is in the black and brown neighborhoods of Washington D.C. and board and eight. So this is a equity issue, of course, um, but it's very interesting since we have an engaged distance learning library across the district have been stepped up and seeing their teachers with um, with a um, with learning tool and uh, a lot of training that has taken place. So it's very interesting now that um, the schools that were saying, you know, librarian needs to keep my school the budget, now they're trying to walk those decisions. Um, I uh, on a Zoom call with the chance, in other words, our superintendent uh, last Friday, along with her, um, President of the Washington Teachers Union and John Ashka with uh, every library is um, working, superintendent team identifying some and also funds that he care of. So everything up in the air. Um, the chair cannot deny the fact that librarians are very active in these two weeks of learning this dish. And if you follow anything taking place, you Follow me on underscore lion on Facebook, Instagram, or on, um, and you can visit the library. Please, please, um, on petition. We had 90 of people in Washington D area have completed that uh, that petition and that you will. Um, we have we currently have a little over 100 people. Have completed mission. Fifteen hundred people uh, have over um, ninety percent of them are from the D.C. area. So if you complete the mission, I will join in the chat momentarily. Thank you very much. Thank you, Casey. We appreciate that. Uh, on our end, we were having a little bit of difficulty with your audio. It was cutting in and out. Um, there's nothing we can do about that. And, uh, we apologize to everybody. But we're going to ask Casey to give us just a quick report. She can put it in the chat or she can email it uh, to Chandra Walker, either one. But we appreciate you uh, giving us that feedback. And I think in a nutshell, what she was saying is that um, school librarians are critical. And I think all of us know that as people as being part of the profession, but people on the outside don't. Um, so you get rid of all the school librarians and then you wonder why reading comprehension is falling down. Shocker. Um, Andrew mentioned on the list served last week about the lack of exposure in the media uh, regarding the work that libraries and librarians are doing on the front lines and what we're doing to pivot as uh, Vice President Shante Burns Simpson mentioned that we just did it just like in half a second um, to go from live programs to almost virtually everything being online. So I just submitted an article for the Indianapolis Reporter, which is a historic newspaper here in Indianapolis, it's 125 years old. So as soon as that gets published, I will push that out. But I would encourage all of you uh, to write your um, your local papers and editorial pieces and get some things out there because we have to advocate for ourselves. Amen. So, Rudolph. Yeah. 
What's on your t-shirt, Shante? I can't recognize who that is. It's the black woman. Okay. Okay, Rudolph Clay wanted to give us an update. And if we could unmute Rudolph, we'd appreciate it. And he's going to tell us about vendors. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my uh, audio may go in and out, so I'll be watching the chat board. So if, uh, if I am going in and out, uh, let me know, and I will just uh, make these few comments. One of the things I just wanted to talk a little bit about membership. Our current membership is 651. What happens is that most people, a lot of people join or renew at annual. So since we will not be at annual, I want you to know that you'll be getting a message uh, from Memorize indicating that your membership is about to expire, uh, usually getting about three, two to three weeks before your membership expires. Please do respond to that. If not, then I will be following up with um, I will be following up with uh, an email because sometimes out of sight, out of mind, and uh, we, that's a great opportunity for us for us to do it. The other thing you might remember that we are in a membership campaign again at 651, but we really have to be uh, further, much further along. And I think if we had had annual uh, number of people may have joined there. So on the website, uh, again, renewing, but we need to get new members also. So one of the things I want you to do is, uh, one of the things we have is a get a member card, and it's just a card that you can email maybe others in your organization or in other organizations. We briefly uh, talk about our goals of BCALA and give easy information on how to get to the website to get much more information. So that get a member card and also our membership brochure that's available. These are both PDFs on the website. Those are tools that you can use to um, uh, let others know about your organization. And if you're having some kind of meeting where you would like to um, have more of these, you can certainly email me, Rudolph C. Uh, send it to the listener, and I can, you know, I can mail you printed copies of the uh, brochure. We have some uh, um, ask about BCLA uh, buttons, other things that you can utilize. So those are just a couple of things. We're strong, but we need to keep the momentum going. I'm asking the vendors that would have been at our at NCAL this summer to uh, stay with us be at NCAL next summer. And hopefully, you know, some of them might fall away and certainly we'll pick up new ones also. So as usual, I'm always asking the members to be in contact with vendors that you use for your library when you get back to your libraries uh, and asking them about the possibility of them being a vendor um, at uh, NCAL. If you have questions about membership, again, you can email me um, and I will answer all of those. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Rudy. We appreciate it. Yes, um, Is there, are there any ALA leadership here or JCLC leadership here? Ken? Um, if you are, Stone can you put Morgan. something in the chat box so we can recognize you? Tracy Hall, Mr. Uh, Julius Jefferson, are they online? I don't see anyone that's saying anything. And while we're waiting for them to step up, I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that the ebook winners are going to be announced next week in a press release and they'll also be uh, pursued to attend in cal in 2021 uh gladys can you send that uh, press release to me directly because i can also put that in the newsletter and then we should share that uh with the media outlets in our area because i think that's important gladys also wanted to propose a budget to fund or support travel or lodging so we can talk about that a little bit later i don't think we have any ala leaders but we did want to give um Sasha orange an opportunity to speak she had a couple of questions can we unmute her mic please okay you you're unmuted me? yes okay you now uh, I'm sorry that I was late um, coming to the meeting, so you may have already covered this, but I heard um, 
the question about um, making sure that people around the country recognize what's going on, especially in school libraries, but elsewhere. And if you will remember, I am always talking about partnering. I'm glad that you're asking about whether JCLC or other ALA folk are here. Remember that your voices are much louder uh, and much stronger and carry much more weight when you are talking about um, when you are when you are con including all of the caucuses, whether you are making a point in council or whether you're trying to do some promotion, and I think I think really putting the pressure on um, the media, the promotional arm of ALA, as well as your state library associations, to address your concerns to the press. I mean, they already have all of that. All, they have the contact, they have all of that. So in addition to contacting your local newspapers and your local press, um, make sure that you're using, I mean, we're members of ALA and that's what your membership is paying for. So make sure, and if you have state associations, that's what your state membership is paying for. So let's not work, let's not work only within BCALA, let's work collaboratively. And if you're not hearing from those people, then make noise. I mean, that's what you, that's what you have. And I, the, one of the things, just finally, that I wanna remind you, and I think the concept that KC was talking about in terms of what's happening with school libraries, remember that in the mission statements of all five of the associations, including and also in JCLC, the concept of, of working directly with communities and for communities. And so use the power that you have to make ALA, to make your state associations, to, uh, to address the issues that you have, because it isn't just BCALA that has those issues, it's all five associations of color and JCLC. And I think you'll find a willing and a welcome um, attitude from all the leadership, but somebody has to step up. And since 1970, BCALA has been one of those groups and one of the main groups that has stood up and said, we need to move forward. So let's use the power of our history and let's use the power that we have today. So that's all. Thank you. Ms. Seisha. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> Ms. Seisha, I want to thank you for, um, for that. I want to thank you for um, all the mentoring you have done since I've taken office. Um, I've heard everything you've said since on the phone calls and the emails and the texts that we go through. I'd like to uh, let you know that uh, Vice President Simpson and I have been very involved with um, JCLC. We had a meeting with JC. We called a meeting with JCLC during midwinter. We wanted to foster a better relationship with JCLC and all of the other uh, affiliates. We set up a panel where when something goes on in anyone's community that we uh, all get together and put out one joint statement that has been formed because of the leadership of BCALA. Good. Um, Good. The leadership of BCALA, uh, we have held meetings with the city of Philadelphia and the uh, Pennsylvania Library Association re regarding equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, New York is now a part of New York um, Black New York Library Association, um, Georgia Library Association. So um, we've definitely heard what you said from the day that I've taken office to today. We've heard what you said and we've acted on um, many of your suggestions. And we just want to thank you for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I want you all to be sure to read your American libraries in the May issue because I submitted a letter, which I understand is being printed about yes. poor coverage of the 50th anniversary of BCALA. So mm -hmm. I've seen the text and it is going to be uh, included in that. Um, Vice President Burns, do you want to speak on that also? What we've been, what we've been doing? <laughs> do you really want me to? <laughs> uh, what part do you want me to share? <laughs> Whatever part you want to share. I mean, we, we want to keep this uh, Zoom PG. So yes. we do want to, um, there was an article in the past American Libraries uh, edition talking about BCALA. Um, many members, as well as uh, the executive board, was not pleased with the article. 
Um, I do want to point out membership, how important membership is, and to stay current on your membership, whether you want to run to be part of BCLA, you do have to be a member. And if you want to continue to be on the committee and board, you have to keep your membership uh, current. Um, unfortunately, we had uh, people who represented BCLA in the article who were not current members. Along with that, there were some comments uh, in the article that was not accurate. I do not want to point people out, but they had um, agendas on why they said what they said in the article, unfortunately. Um, Richard and I did have a private phone call with ALA and um, the person who wrote the, the article for the American Libraries. And they did not do their due diligence. They did not research. They, did, they had Rudy, yay Rudy, who was in the article, who is chair of membership. And they didn't even go to him to talk about who they were interviewing to make sure that they were BCLA members. So there was a lot of issues with that article. And I'm so glad that Seisha is writing an article to, to fix that, uh, to clarify BCLA and our strong um, foundation and our strong history within librarianship. And uh, we will be doing another article. We, will, we want everyone to know what BCLA brings uh, when it comes to librarians and, and how we do create leaders. Again, we have uh, BCLA members who are current ALA, mem uh, uh, ALA presidents who will be the next ALA president. We have Tracy Hall. I mean, we have so many people. I mean, uh, Carla Hayden, who are BCLA members who represent strong librarians in the profession. And we need to make sure that that is always well represented in any article. And that's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Vice President. You're welcome. Thank you, Shantae. We appreciate that. Um, and we'd also, of course, like to have uh, a huge piece uh, in the BCA lay newsletter uh, regarding the 50th. Uh, because 50 years is very, very significant. Uh, there's been a lot of growth and a lot of change over those 50 years, and we want to have an accurate a portrayal of that. So Elise Brown, I wanted to give a big up to Sasha. Can we uh, unmute her um, microphone for about one minute? Elise, you're up. Elise, can you hear us? Okay, I don't think we can hear. We're having some audio issues. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and forward to head. Uh, do we have any other um, leadership members on the call who have not been recognized? Okay, so do we have any questions that we have not answered? I know we had some questions about um, information regarding the committees and what the service terms were. Uh, that's something Shonda Walker is going to be sending out for us. Okay, we do have a question here. For proposals that have been accepted before the postponement, will we have to resubmit new proposals for the conference year? Uh, no, you will not have to resubmit. If you have been accepted, uh, we are going to carry those forward for next year. Uh, we're going to give everyone an opportunity um, to either continue on or to back out, depending on if things have changed over the last year, but you will not have to resubmit. And so that's a decision um, co-chair and I, Twana Hodge, uh, have made, and we've already shared that uh, with leadership. So no, you will not have to resubmit. Uh, Elise thinks she can speak now. Can we release her audio. Okay, Elise, go ahead. Elise, we can hear a little bit, but not a lot. Okay. That's not working. If you wanted to go ahead and just put something in the chat, that would be great. Uh, Andrew just indicated uh, that he'd like to have periodic town halls in the place of ALA and NCAL, highly recommended. 
Uh, I think that's a great idea. Obviously, yeah. that would have to go before leadership. I think um, so. Um, I'm sorry, Michelle. When I first no, go ahead, took, Richard. When I first took office, the plan was was to have um, a, a town hall before every conference, and um, we've been having we've had trouble with the platform. But we've purchased this platform, and so yes, Andrew, we, we will be having um, more town hall meetings before. Um, before NCAL and before um, in midwinter and before annual and uh, yes, I would like to see I would like to see a town hall, like you said and you earlier with your affiliates, town hall with the school librarians, a town hall with the um, academic librarians. Um, I'd like to pull all the librarians and all from all walks of librarianship into this caucus and make them feel a part of this caucus and that they have a voice in this caucus. The medical librarians, I mean, we have, we have some great, great people part of this uh, yes. organization. The, the librarians for the- And retirees, of course, we can't, no, of course, yes. of course. So something else that we're uh, thinking about as we move forward is that uh, we're gonna have a new normal as we move into 2021. And so uh, we can't just go with the old playbook. So we're gonna have to look at having a virtual platform for a significant portion of our conference. So we are working with Cadmium uh, and their um, event scribe that they use uh, in order for us to pull that off. Uh, so we'll need some additional people to help us with that. Uh, but the leadership of BCLA is definitely looking to the future. So someone, Patrice Green wanted to know, could that open up the possibility for others to participate in or present at the conference next year? Uh, we're gonna look at that, um, but if we go uh, for a virtual platform, that's gonna change the dynamic a little bit and uh, the amount of bandwidth we have uh, to be able to support that. So that's something that we're gonna be working on as we move forward. Uh, so we will keep you posted on that. Um, or, she could help, or she could join the committee and make it happen. Definitely. We're always open uh, to new committee members. Yeah, because I would love to hear our ideas around that. Um, is uh, BCLA member Ray Pun still on? Because I know he might be able to talk to us about the, the status of midwinters, because I know that that's going to be going away soon. So if he's on, I would love for him to talk about that. Hi, everyone. Uh, no, I, I don't have any updates. I know um, everyone's probably still wondering. So um, with the SCOE and all these other um, discussions happening, I think it's uh, remains to be seen. Okay. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> yeah, Ray, we appreciate you. Thank you, Ray. We appreciate that. So Andrew was saying we have to maximize online. Uh, even when we can meet together face-to-face, -to -face, I think that's true. Uh, this is also a tool that the affiliates can use. As far as the Indiana Black Librarians Network, uh, we had already determined that we were going to do half virtual meetings and half uh, physical meetings. Uh, with this year, that might become all virtual uh, because Indiana, you have kind of challenging weather. And so that's why we were doing that. So I think we all have to be ready to pivot with that. Uh, Elise Brown indicated yesterday she was pleased to see a message from Sasha forwarded by her supervisor um, to elected new officers about a new young librarian who's moving up in leadership. Uh, so that's incredible. And so if that is a BCALA member, please submit that to me and that can also go in the newsletter because we do want to encourage uh, people that are uh, moving up in leadership. Are there any other questions, comments, or concerns? Before we close out, we will allow uh, President Ashby and Vice President Burns Simpson to speak uh, at the very end. But if anyone has a question, feel free to put that in our text box, in the chat box. Okay, I don't see any questions. Uh, so we will let uh, Vice President Burns Simpson uh, speak for a few moments, and then we will let uh, President Ashby close us out. Thank you. I mean, this was fantastic. I mean, it's, it's just so great to see all the questions and hear everybody's ideas, and I'm so glad that we are moving in the direction that members want to see the caucus move into. So I just thank you, and I agree that we should have these 
uh, more often, maybe something that we could do quarterly, so at least four times a year. But uh, I just thank you for everyone that uh, participated tonight. I mean, we all have long, busy days, even if we're in the house. It doesn't mean you want to sit in front of a computer. Uh, and have a good evening. Yes. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Shante. I want to thank the entire BCLA, the membership, the membership, the executive committee, the executive board, my um, retirees, uh, Stanton and Sasha, Andrew, um, people that we call on and that, that, that do so much work for us. I want to give a special thank you to Dr. Walker, who was our organizational director, but she's still at our beck and call. There's no time that we've called Dr. Walker and she has not come running. Um, and we just thank you. We appreciate you. I'd like to thank Michelle and Tawana. I'm, I'm putting this together and James. Uh, this, this was a uh, second one we've done since I've been president. Uh, this is great. I appreciate everyone coming on. Please, if you, something comes up that wasn't mentioned tonight, please don't hesitate to write us, call us. Uh, we're, we're always ready for new ideas. And once again, I keep saying it, it is so very important that we get out and nominate people and vote. We have to keep this conference, this caucus alive. It's a sustainable. It was built on the shoulders of giants, and we are future giants. And take care of yourself, be safe, um, stay inside, practice, practice social distancing, and sooner or later, once again, we'll be able to meet each other and hug and greet each other and have a wonderful time. See you all next time. I guess we'll see each other. We'll be, if it's not virtually, it will be at midwinter. God bless you and good night. Thanks everybody, take care. And don't forget to fill out your census form. Don't be that ancestor that can't be found in 72 years. <laughs> Love, peace and soul, bye. Peace.